You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. The 6,487 Hands of God by Harris Coverley Mr. Hopton had not seen his daughter for nearly 30 years, but he had finally saved enough to take the hazardous flight to Australia. He'd never been one for sailing, and the Trans-Siberian Express was far more expensive than a plane journey. The old man waited at Manchester International Airport to board the plane, his nerves buzzing, his eyes stuck on the worn, thin, black carpet of the lounge. He ignored the streams of busy and desperate human life going in all directions about him. At last, Hopton was called to his gate, and after a steady ten-minute walk, he was waiting in line between two couples, both of whom he gathered were emigrating down under. "'It's risky, we know,' said the man of the couple behind him, "'but we decided it was worth it.' "'Oh, yes,' said his wife. "'This country's a blowout now. Brisbane's the only way to go.' The other couple hummed loudly in agreement, and Hopton sighed. "'It's all right for him,' he thought. They only have to go to once. I have to go around twice. Or do I? The attendants, in their ill-fitting blue jackets, then ushered them onto the plane. After the obligatory confusion, the passengers crammed their too heavy carry-on luggage into the overhead compartments and took their grimy seats. So dangerous, Hopton thought, yet so necessary. They can charge what they like, and let customer service go to L. After an unexplained fifteen-minute delay, the captain announced over the gravelly intercom, "'Ladies and gentlemen, the prayer has been sent up through the Divinity Tower, and we will begin our taxi immediately.' Hopton groaned internally. The dread bubbled on his brain like cheap cooking fat. The taxiing was bumpy, and the engines grumbled on, weak and pathetic, Hopton soon felt the judder of the guiding vehicle detaching, and the tires roared on the tarmac as the plane gathered speed. The old man clutched his armrests, as it seemed did everyone. Sometimes he could be fatally late. The plane shook and rattled as it went faster and faster. He's not going to come, Hopton thought. He's not going to... And then he came. The one thousandth and seventy-seventh hand of God came down from the sky and gently scooped the plane up and into the air just before it reached the end of the runway. The turbulence was rough for a few minutes as God angled things up, but soon they were sailing through the air on their twenty-two-hour long journey. The passengers and crew collectively settled. Soon the service trolleys were rolling up the aisle and people relaxed into their coping strategies, whether that was a book, a newspaper, or one of the six or so films that were an option on the individual back-of-the-seat TV screens. Hopton had been too fretful to think of a distraction for the flight and so sat with nothing to do other than sip his tiny complimentary water. First time? asked the woman next to him. He turned to her and noted her frilled white shirt under a dark jacket and matching skirt, a uniform of some sort. She was in her forties, pasty, red-haired, genial. Hopton nodded, his mouth already dry again. I was like you once, she said, and nursed a gin and tonic. Scared, shaky, I thought every bump was my doom. But these days I put my faith in God, every time. She pointed upwards to the heavens and took another drink. Hopton nodded again and finished the last of his water. "'So, what's your game?' she asked him. "'Me game,' he replied, confused. "'Your game, your line of work, old son,' she said. "'I was in coppice for a long time,' he answered. "'I own a couple of properties now, but I'm otherwise retired.' "'Hm,' she rattled her ice cubes. I've been meaning to get into property myself, but for the meantime I'm a courier. She waved her hand around dismissively and finished off her drink. She then pressed her service button and ordered another G&T. They sat in silence while the woman's words sunk in. You're a courier? Hopton asked as she began to work on her new drink. Yep, she said, ten years now. Documents, art, don't ask, don't tells, whatever they want me to carry. Hopton shuffled uncomfortably in his seat and asked, 
Aren't you afraid? Afraid? What of? Of, Hopton started, but then leaned over and whispered, of divine failure. She laughed. Oh, no, my boy. They calculate that God fails every 6,487 times. That's just once for every single hand he has. This is my 5,300th and second. What does that mean, though? If I get to 6,486 courier flights, it means, as averages go, I've reached my limit and I should stop. Chances are I'd die on the next one. Isn't that reasoning a bit spurious? asked Hopton. I mean, you could still, could still... As he drifted off, the courier simply grinned again and raised her half-empty glass at him. This disturbed him so much that he got up wordlessly and went to the toilet, where nothing happened despite his best efforts. He then had a stroll around the rest of the plane, thinking of all the times God had let the plane slip, had got too excited and crumpled the aluminium, bent the wings. When Hopton returned to his seat, the courier was asleep upright, something he wondered if she had trained herself for. He sat back down and ordered himself a whiskey and soda, which he promptly drank. It was over twenty hours to go until Queensland. Hopton wrote a brief note for his daughter and decided to put his faith in God. He then went to sleep, but not in as upright a fashion as his neighbor. We hope you enjoyed The 6,487 Hands of God by Harris Coverley, read by Rob Gillespie. If you'd like to learn more about the author and narrator of this story or make a donation to them, follow the story page link in the description. If you would like to submit a story for consideration or apply to be a narrator, a link to our submission guidelines is in the description. This story is copyrighted 2020 by the Centropic Oracle. <laughs>